Let's take a look at how we now can import the OBJ mesh model, including the texture, into Blender. First, what I want to do is I'm going to make a new folder and call this simply Temo Meteor and drag this one in there, make a new folder, call the scan, and drag those in here. Inside this folder, Temometer later, I want to save my Blender file. So it always has access also to the scan texture. Okay, so let's go to Blender. Here we have a new file. I will delete everything. Um, I will go to metric length I set to millimeters. This is very good. And then I will go to file import and wavefront obj then i go to the desktop here is the project folder i just created here is my obj model the rest here i can completely ignore i simply click import takes a moment it's 45 megabytes of mesh data And then once it is done, just in a second, there we are. Very good. Okay, so with this done now, what we ha what we have to do is we clean up. So we remove everything we don't need, and then we will position everything. So let's go to this view. Then uh, I press R and rotate it. Very good. Then. I press G, move it to the center. I go to the top view, press R, rotate it a little bit. Okay, so this is just only trying to line this up a little bit. Looking from the side, I press R and rotate it just a notch, trying to make this top line here to be more horizontal. Okay, so that's that's pretty pretty fine. When we go to the shaded view for the materials, now you can see where the texture is. And yeah, and so this is a little bit higher, this is a little bit lower, which means this whole object from this view, press R, maybe rotate a little bit to make sure that this looks more it's horizontal yeah okay maybe g moved this a little bit to the center and i'm using the grid to rotate this a little bit more correctly this is just only a pre pre-step now we can go into edit mode then we press aa to deselect everything or here select none we can go to shaded uh, not shaded view we will go to turn on the x-ray view then I press B and select all the stuff that's at the bottom you see the uh, x-ray view turned on I can select through my whole object press X and delete I remove all the stuff I don't need then I go and zoom in a little bit. Now I can press C, that's kind of like for brush, and I brush the bottom part. So I just click, click, and click. To when you press C and use the mouse wheel, it then actually changes the size. So this looks okay. How does this look on the other side? Yeah, it's actually good. Then let's go to here, press C, and no, I just click and drag. Maybe here one more time. Oh, there was a little little delay on my my side so i press b and middle mouse button and drag this one out 
I can press B also and see, well, does this actually select all the bottom part? B and then here, there, and then B and middle mouse button and try to clean this one up. And let's see, um, does it work pretty good? Yeah, looks so. Okay, then I can press X and delete. Turn this X-ray off. Go to object mode and yeah, I actually trimmed this pretty, pretty good. Very nice. So now we kind of like have the geometry we want to work with. We have to scale this into the correct position and then rotate this even more. So shift S cursor to world origin. And then you see the center point is there. Right click origin origin to 3D cursor. Okay, this object fits actually into a box that is 34 millimeters wide and 137 millimeters long. So in 3D view, shift A, plane, press N, then here X, this will be 137 millimeters and Y will be 34 millimeters. And are tiny, huh, as you can see. Okay, so that is how big this object actually is. And we can see how large this one is. Now we can select our mesh, press S and S, go to a top view and S. And now I can see that it's a little bit too far at the bottom. So G and Y, move this up a little bit. I will set the scale also to the 3D cursor now. So it scales always from the center. G and Y, G and X, bring this over there. Okay. R, looks like I need to rotate this a little bit. I'm paying attention to here to this edge. G and Y, take more. S, yeah, and I'm paying, paying attention to what's happening there and there. G and X, A, A, to deselect everything. Yep, yeah, that's actually pretty good. Okay, so from the top, that seems to be quite good. This now we can bring down and I'm going to pay attention to what's the distance here. Is this mesh following the grid line pretty parallel? It does. I have the feeling this back is a little bit lower, this is a little bit higher. So I still have my 3D cursor turned on. So the this object will now rotate around its center point. So a little bit to there, G and Z, there. That should now be pretty lined up on the ground. Okay, good. Now, let's take a look at how does this also feel from here. Let me show you an interesting technique. So shift A, make a plane. This plane is pretty big. So we scale this one down. I will actually now turn this for the moment to bounding box. Then let's rotate this one by 90 degrees. Very good. Bring this over, bring this to here, go to this view. Uh, and we will do the following now. Go to edit mode, control R, click and escape, select all this, press X, delete vertices, then I select this, delete edge, select this, delete edge, select this, G and Z, bring this down, select here, G and Z, bring this up. I'm clicking right here because I know there is a point. G and Y, bring this over, select both, Shift D and Z, line this up, G and Y. Uh, 
want this one here, G and Y, bring over, select both G and Z. And I want to do one more, Shift D, Z, G and Y, OK. This object has its center point on Z, which means now I can go over and mirror this to the Y axis. So there actually, now I can see that, ha, huh, you see, it is not perfect there. So what's going on? Maybe what's happening is this object is slightly rotated to the right side. And also here, I have some, some rings here too. So let's go to the top view, shift, a circle, we make this 64 and the radius here, the first one will be 4.25. I will move this one up, there it is. And then I will bring this over kind of like to here. Okay, so 8.5, shift D and escape, bring this one over, and then this we will set to 7.5 and 7.5. That's the smaller opening, okay, yeah. Now we can see this edge is over, this edge is a little bit under. Um, we can shift D, make a bigger circle too, and just slide it over, try to frame it, and then see how does this, for example, relate? Can we, yeah, there you can even also there see something is slightly off. Okay. So on the ground, my object is probably good, just along the X axis, it has to be rotated. So I select my object. Importantness, it is grounded on, it is actually put on the ground. So we go to the 3D cursor, shift S also cursor to world origin. We can at this point also say reset origin to 3D cursor. Go to the top view. I know this is the X axis. I have to rotate it. So I press when I zoom in here, RX and then C. How do I have to rotate it? And you notice actually, yeah, there everything starts to line up. Pretty good. G and Y, yeah, no, G and X. Okay, this is all pretty good. Let's select this here one more time. We will go to this view, go to edit. Yeah, and you see now this is actually much, much closer. So when I bring this one over, outside, outside, click this one, on the surface, on the surface, there, pretty good. Yeah, that works, that works really nice. We can do this one more time, Shift D and escape. We bring this one over to here and I will now switch back to bonding box move this one down, go to edit mode, select, let's say all this, move this down and I pay attention to when this actually starts to sink in. Here, this is really high. So I bring this one further down, Z and wireframe, there's the dot Z and shaded view. You notice how in this case here, these things line up, which is why very often I simply press G and Y. And then actually, it, um, it's sometimes a little bit easier to see. Oh, but be careful when you press Y because that disconnects the point. Uh, what did I do? Oh, I moved this to the wrong position. Well, my fault, sorry. Oh, it's on that side. Okay, good. So there it sinks in. There's that other point.
here's the last one. Okay. To do an, a nice um, cut section view, we go to the top view, then view region clipping, and we do a clipping. Because now when I rotate, I can see, uh, do these probes actually touch? Yeah, they touch pretty well, which means that, um, hold on one second, so let's go back to here. This means when at this position, the probes hit the mesh well, and here the probes hit the mesh well, the object also from the top is perfectly rotated. Because the these probes here also touch the surface perfect. That means that from this view, the object is rotated perfectly. Very good. So what we can do now is simply make a new collection and all these objects, which are kind of like our alignment elements, we put into a new collection, call this alignment, turn this on, and then here we can hide those for the moment. And we can call this scan there. Very good. This object is perfectly rotated. It has a scale factor and a rotation factor. Um, so let's apply rotation and scale. And now we will go and say save. And we save this into our correct folder here. So when we go back and open it, the software always knows where is the scan folder, where is now then the texture. So when we go into texture mode, we always can uh, see the texture here. Okay, that basically then explains also the process how to bring a 3D mesh model into Blender, use few measurements of very too easy identify uh, features like width and length, the circles here, and then using those alignment meshes as a smart tool to figure out the correct rotation. Um, so that when we now then rebuild actually this object, we don't have later the problem of our perfect mesh kind of like intersecting awkwardly the scanned mesh. And that's it.